You may not see it yet, but being alone is a blessing in disguise if you find yourself journeying on the spiritual path, it's almost certain that you'll encounter stretches of solitude sometimes lasting years. Many tread this path before you and many will after, but in these solitary phases you're uniquely alone confronting your truest self. We don't always willingly enter this solitude, sometimes life simply places us. There and the struggle begins our ego chafes at this, unless it yearns for external stimuli for applause, for anything but the quiet it might even throw a fit wallowing in self-pity downing the day it dared to walk a path so devoid of worldly distractions. You'll hear its cries, why me? Why am I alone? When everyone else seems to bask in companionship and joy this egoistic resistance isn't just a fleeting thought it can be a formidable roadblock, it twists your perception making you believe you're the sole traveler on this lonely road that everyone else has an easier eater. It's a bitter pill that the ego wants you to swallow, telling you that you're being unjustly held back, that the universe is keeping score and marking. You as unworthy, yet the very awareness that you're more than your ego's complaints is transformative your solitude. Becomes not a prison but a sanctuary, it turns into a space of growth introspection, and most importantly, a fertile ground for awareness you begin to see solitude as not just time spent alone, but time spent with a part of you that's often drowned out by the noise of daily life in this quiet you can. Constructively channel your energies and aspirations as philosopher Sayon Card wisely noted the crowd is untruth away. From the crowd and your aloneness, you're given the rare opportunity to confront your truth to shape it and to emerge from it, not as a fragment, but as a whole. When we start to touch the edges of a higher understanding, our desires shift. What once attracted us like endless social gatherings and external validation slowly lose their appeal. This change isn't abrupt, but gentle like a leaf changing colors at Seasons shift your soul starts to crave solitude as much as your ego used to seek company. This change isn't a loss, but a metamorphosis you find joy in your own presence. Hear the rustle of trees, as if they're talking to you and begin to appreciate the quiet like never before. This is your soul souls. Way of finding a deeper connection, not just with the world, but also with the essence of who you are as you retreat. Inward, a new landscape opens before you, a landscape of possibilities, wisdom, and profound peace. Imagine your ego as a buzzing fly always seeking the next sweet thing your spirit, on the other hand, is like a butterfly content to sit and absorb the beauty around it, the contrast is clear one is restless. While the other is at peace in its solitude, when you resist this call to solitude, it feels cramped and Uncomfortable because it's not meant to be that way when you fight the natural progression of your spiritual journey, you mistakenly feel that the universe is conspiring against you. But once you embrace solitude, new possibilities. Unfold Henry, no one a spiritual thinker once said solitude is the furnace of transformation. It's that sacred space where you melt away old identities and forge you ones. This is why. So few dare to heed the call of solitude. It's more than just being alone. It's an act of bravery. It takes courage to face one's own reflections, fears, and potentials, without the distractions that make it easy to look away. Continuing in solitude requires stamina and dedicated willpower attributes. That not everyone possesses, it's much easier to stay in the realm of distraction than it is to face the undiscovered country. Of your own self, but those who dare those who persist find that solitude isn't a barren desert, but a fertile ground where the seeds of wisdom take root these seeds don't just sprout overnight, they need the nourishing quiet to grow to towering trees of enlightenment, walking the path of genuine. Spiritual awakening is like venturing into a forest where no trails have been blazed. There's no map to guide you, and no group of fellow travelers to affirm you're on the right path. It's just you and the wilderness of your inner being in contrast following an established religious or spiritual tradition is like walking a well-trodden path with signpost tour guides and fellow hikers, it feels safe because the community reinforces your beliefs and offers a sense of belonging. But what happens when you step away from them? Beaten path, the familiar markers disappear, your sense of right and wrong, spiritual and unspiritual, gets blurred suddenly. There's no comforting chatter of like-minded souls, and you're left with your own voice occurring accused science, a study published in the journal Psychology of Religion and Spirituality found that individuals who went through spiritual transformations often experience the collapse of the 
Interpretive framework meaning their old ways of making sense of the world no longer applied. It's both liberating and isolating you. Understand that the usual social and spiritual narratives are just that narratives they may work for some, but not for you anymore, as you shed the layers of inherited. Beliefs and societal norms, you may feel like a snake shedding its skin. It's a natural process, but not an easy one. Many falter during this solitary period because it's emotionally taxing. It's a sort of existential loneliness that's hard to put into words, let alone share with someone who hasn't experienced it. The poet Raina Maria Real said the only journey is the one within. And this journey within is a solitary. One, the ego fights against it because it threatens its very existence built as it is on social validation and external norms. But if you can withstand the pressure, navigate through the wilderness of your inner world, then what awaits you on the other side is a freedom that's both profound and deeply personal. It's the freedom of a bird that has finally found its wings, not because someone told it how to fly, but because it discovered the sky within itself in the quiet stretches of solitude you uncover raw truths about the spiritual journey truths that are not sure, quoted, or gentle. This is a trek that demands grit and heart. Though your conscious will might say you're ready for the journey, the true test lies in your ability to accept that this path has chosen you not the other way around, you'll quickly find that the spiritual path doesn't care. For your plans or your ego's desires, it operates on its own terms. You can either resist making your journey a rocky one or accept allowing yourself to flow with the current. Even the notion of willingness must be shed as the process strips you down to your core removing even the you that was willing to take the journey in the first place, new perspectives emerge, you start to realize that the spiritual path is more about unlearning than learning about shedding false identities rather than acquiring new ones. It's like peeling an onion. Every layer removed reveals more about what lies at the center, or rather what doesn't. Interestingly, a Harvard study on happiness revealed that strong social bonds contribute to a long and fulfilling life. While true, this doesn't negate the spiritual insight or relationships can be distractions to. Especially when they keep you from facing yourself on your journey, the kind of social bonds you form will differ they are not. Permanent, but their impermanence makes them powerful. One minute you'd find companionship in a book the next, in a stranger who offers an enlightening perspective, and sometimes even in the silent gaze of a pet. These relationships come and go like travelers crossing a bridge leaving footprints that Guide your next steps even though this phase of your life lacks permanence, its value is immense. You'll learn about trust trust, not in others, but in the process itself you'll also encounter love. Not the sentimental kind that fills movie screens, but the tough raw love that accepts and embraces even the darkest corners of your being. As the philosopher Alan Watts once said the only way to make sense out of change is to plunge into it. Move with it and join the dance your dance partners may change, but the the music, the underlying truth remains constant, you may feel isolated. But in this solitary state, you're not alone, you're part of something far greater than yourself. Each moment of solitude is an opportunity to align with this greater reality. Your commitment then becomes less about trudging along the predefined path and more about harmonizing with a rhythm that has been playing long before you were aware of it. Commitment truth is your compass on this journey steering you not by ego's whims, but by a deeper calling that emanates from your very core. This isn't a restrictive kind of commitment. It's liberating, it narrows your field of view. To focus on what's truly valuable, your inner truth by dedicating yourself to this path, you're not constricting your freedom, but refining it. It's as if you've turned off the noisy. Distractions around you allowing in the soft whispers of your inner self to become clear when you focus inwards, the static of the outer world fades the Harvard Business Review points at that too many choices can actually paralyze us, leaving us less satisfied similarly when your commitment to truth narrows your choices. It leads to a more meaningful and satisfying journey in your solitude, the present. Moment becomes your sanctuary instead of fretting about what's missing, appreciate what's present, surrender to what is not in defeat, but in a deep acceptance that opens you to new possibilities as you move from one unknown moment to the next trust that each step will reveal the path designed for you. This is your responsibility, your part in this vast unfolding experience. Take it seriously, but wear it lightly. For in every moment, you're crafting your own odyssey guided by the silent yet powerful pull of your inner truth navigating the waters of aloneness. 
is both an art and a practice, a delicate balance of doing and being when you're alone. You're given an unprecedented chance to dig deep into the layers of your inner world. So how can you make the most of this time start with intention? A simple walk can be transformed into a pilgrimage of self-discovery. If you go into it with the right mindset, studies have shown that even a brief amount of solitude can improve emotional well-being. So seize these moments, immerse yourself in learning, whether it's books, podcasts, or lectures that speak to you, use this. Quiet time to nourish your intellect and spirit, allow the wisdom of others to inspire your own insights. Silence is your friends, not your enemy in the stillness. You can hear the whispers of your soul's soul. Your wants, your fears, and your desires, listen deeply. You might surprise yourself with what you find be raw and open with your emotions. If you need to cry and cry, if you need to laugh to so wholeheartedly. Allowing yourself to feel is the first step toward understanding those feelings draw your attention inward. Focusing on what really matters to you, whether it's your passion, your goals, or your values, give yourself the space to reflect on them. And remember, transformation is not always comfortable. It's okay to feel unsettled or even miserable at times. Socrates once said an unexamined life is not worth living so let this period of solitude be your space for deep self-examination allow the raw unfiltered truths about yourself to surface and wash over you you'll emerge from this phase only more aware but fundamentally changed ready for the next chapter of your life's journey when the road seems endless and every turn brings a new challenge it's easy to question the point of it all you try every technique read every book and follow every piece of advice yet the emptiness persists it's a tough stretch of them. Journey one that leaves you wondering if you'll ever find what you're looking for, but as writer and Asanin puts it, and the day came when the risk to remain tight and a bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom, this sign of isolation is not a punishment for the classroom. It's an invitation to stop searching outwardly and start exploring inwardly. You're not just killing time, you're in a chrysalis undergoing act. Metamorphosis this phase may feel like it stretches on forever but it's temporary and it's essential for your spiritual unfolding. The irony is, if you were to form new relationships at this stage, they'd be founded on the you that you're trying to transcend, you're in a transformational cocoon and connections made now could hinder your emergence as a new you people might fall for your old self, the ego base. Persona you're working so hard to shed when you're by yourself. There are no mirrors to reflect back an identity you've outgrown. This is the time to grapple with your inner fears, your haunting thoughts, and your ingrained beliefs. You'll come to see that these are not integral parts of you, but layers. You Can Shed research has found that periods of solitude can lead to increased self-awareness and better stress. Management so embrace this solitary chapter, let it be the space where you dismantle the old and discover the new know that you're setting the stage for relationships that will meet you, where you're headed, not where you've been. You may feel alone, but in this illness, you're in good company your future. Self the moment will arrive when you're called to step back into the world to leave the cocoon and spread your wings until then, let the spotlight fall solely on you and the task at hand the world may seem distant. But it's preparing you for a triumphant return, trust the timing it's never wrong consider your solitude as a secret weapon, a shield against distractions years from now you'll gaze back and appreciate how it fortified your spirit, it's not a burden but a treasure resist the urge to frame this experience as a lonely chapter. If you do, you'll only end up trapped in a maw of dissatisfaction. It's a double-edged sword, why end for the company of others to eagerly? And you may find yourself disengaged when you finally get it, your ego will be the one craving the crown, not the real you notice when social. Interactions begin to feel like chores, like you're wearing a mask that no longer fits, that's your cue. It's the universe, I mean you say. Enough time to retreat and reboot if you ignore the signals you're resisting the inevitable setting yourself up for a harder fall, you'll get there either way, so why not make the journey smoother by choosing to heed the call as you surrender to your loneness, the work begins in earnest, don't just sit. There dig deep engage in self-inquiry pose the hard questions you've always avoided, who am I, really? What do I truly want, what's holding me back, and the biggest one, what does life want from me when you find the answers they won't just live in your head? They'll resonate through your entire being. Your solitude is a fertile ground plant, the seeds of introspection, and you'll harvest wisdom it may be. The kind of wisdom that makes you realize the right career path or the courage to end a toxic relationship, it's not. 
just mental work, it's soul work every moment you spend in this reflective state. You're sculpting a version of your yourself that's robust, resilient, and ready for whatever comes next. It might feel like an endless tunnel now, but there's light ahead. Soon you'll be so rooted in your new self that reintegrating into society will feel less like a plung and more like a natural next step. Until then, treat this. Time is your sanctuary, a sacred space where you prepare for the new chapters that await you in the quietude of your aloneness. You're not lost. You're on a journey to the core of who you are. The ache you feel isn't emptiness, but a yearning for authentic connection first with yourself and eventually. With the world again, many people mistake this period as an absence of life filling their hours with distractions. Like social media substance abuse or meaningless relationships, but that's the ego's way to escape the uncomfortable unknown. You can't resolve the ache by looking outward your partner or friends can't feel the void of you can explore when you let go of the life you thought you wanted you embrace that. Life that's been waiting for you as you surrender to this period of solitude, your sense of loneliness will fade. The deeper you venture within, the more the dread turns into an embrace. You come to understand that you're not alone.